How's it going lads? We're here today in a forest in East Clare. The plan for today is to pull out an oak tree that is dead up there and hopefully split it into eight or maybe more different pieces. I'm doing this with my friend Jack Pinson. Uh, he's a bowyer and uh, he's brought some tools out today and hopefully we can get it done. Hello, so my name is Jack Pinson. I'm a bowyer, as Owen already said, and we're here to rive, cleave or split an oak trunk down here today with hand tools and one of the hand tools we're going to be starting out with is this bow saw. So I made it a few weeks ago, it's out of ash, it's got a modern bow saw blade in it and it's tensioned with a rope on the back and I can twist this rope, this lath round to, to increase the tension in the bow saw blade to keep the saw running straight and through. So here we are at the fallen oak, Jack's just about to remove one of the branches to make it easier for us to remove this from where it is. You can see there now it's fallen about two years ago and although the outside does appear rotted and overgrown with moss and whatever else, that's just the sapwood. Beneath that there's a load of very high quality heartwood. We've identified the place to cut it on the top end to give us our length and I'm going to start at it now. So for centuries before the invention of the pit saw and eventually the sawmill, this is how carpenters would have derived straight wooden planks out of tree trunks. In a perfect world, I would have liked to use a crosscut saw, but I didn't bring any up the country with me for summer, so we were stuck using Jack's bow saw. We did have to use wedges every time it got jammed. Saw free. Wedges are amazing. As any tree surgeon worth their salt will tell you, always saw the log you're standing on. So we got a bit of wedge magic going on here. So we should be able to remove this fella now. Go in again with one more next to it. <laughs> Good luck finding that. I can see it! <laughs> and just like that we're back in action. With the power of wedges. Instead, yeah. we get to That's the first of the wood. We cut down as far as we could with the bow saw uh, once it kind of maxed out, and we took the axe and we cut this wedge. So, hopefully, we can go back with the saw and cut that bit lower. So not the dramatic ending we wanted, but I think we're about to finish sawing the whole way through this thing. And there it goes. Yeah. Well done. So we're taking a quick break for water here. We're going to be drinking out of cups that Jack's after turning on the pole aid. So this fella here, end grain beach. Orange oil and camellia are definitely mm. both eatable, edible. Add flavor, if anything. A little bit of flavor. <laughs> okay, so we have decided, having cut the first cut with bow saw and axe and a lot of effort and, a lot, and two hours of time for two of us, uh, to move on to the chainsaw. And this is my Husqvarna 55 with a 22 inch bar, uh, cross cut chain, uh, nice uh, new cylinder and piston, thanks to a friend of mine who helped me put it in. And uh, I'm gonna start at, start at that now. So both of us would have liked to do this using entirely hand tools, unfortunately we were at the mercy of the clock, it was already getting late in the day, and we knew if we spent another two hours cutting the other end by hand, we'd probably have to come back tomorrow, and I was only down in Clare for the one day. We were both satisfied that we could have done it by hand having done the one end, so Jack threw out his safety gear, and he had the other end cut in about 20 seconds. So now we're just going to roll this bad boy down the hill so we can work on it on flat ground. So Jack is using the felon bar or the cant hook 
just to try and roll this thing down the hill. It's biting into the sapwood there, but doesn't seem to be getting much of a hold. Straight, yeah. That's Power beautiful. of yeah. Beautiful. That's nice. Yeah! <laughs> it's out. So we have the log out on its own now and Jack's after spotting a shake within the log. So that's a natural crack within the tree. It's from the core. So it'd probably be best to use that to our advantage, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think so, yeah. Plus uh, you can look at the rest of the log and see where the straight parts are and where the knots are and then decide how you want your eventual boards, planks or beams to be. So there's another shake there then on the other end on a similar plane. So we've been splitting there for about a quarter of an hour. Got three wedges in over there. And Jack's about to come along with his side axe here. Do you want to tell us what a side axe yeah, is? Yeah, a bevel on one side and a flat face on the other. Sharpened to hopefully uh, shaving sharp. Well, this one's been used a bit since then. Uh, I'm going to cut the ties that are still holding some parts of this log together. Very careful not to get any metal wedges with this now. That would be disastrous for the axe blade. Ooh. Yeah, I know, close, right? Another oh, thing. look at this crack here, that's not great. Yeah, it's gone out, it's run off there. It's okay though, because you're only looking at cracking it, splitting this again three ways, yeah. and then that like five ways. It's run off the centre, but only. Almost from the beginning, actually. <laughs> it's an imprecise science, this. So the iron from the wedge has reacted with the oak tannin and it's gone all dark. That's pretty interesting. Anyway, we're splitting these into quarters now. We have that one done. So to get the split to start where you want without it going off to one side, we can tap a sort of a start line across where we want it. I might actually go a bit more that way. It's always a good idea to get the, whatever you're splitting should go in half. It reduces the chance of, of, of one side running off and being unusable at the other, feathering out at the other end. You can do this with a throw as well. So after splitting her into five different pieces, so I think we're just going to keep going, split that fifth into a tenth and then move them down into the horse and wagon. We're using this bow saw here again 
just to remove this ugly knot. We might get some burl wood or something under that. For now, it's just making it more difficult to split. Exactly the plank we were looking for. There's a gun. Gone out. This is bad. something in there, you've got a little mini beam in there, that's yeah. it, take out the set. Yeah, so only one. Yeah. These these are nice, these ones here. Uh, how are we splitting this? Um, hey! Hey! hey. Uh, look, there's more up here I can get as well. Okay. Uh, okay I'll, take a, I'll, I'll take that bit, I suppose. Yeah, so here's a, a little wood wasp, I believe, is the species. Grub. Not a wasp yet, it has to pupate first. Um, yeah, but it's eaten, it leaked through they eat big holes through your timber. So they're not great for timber, they're great for environment. Do you reckon there's any more in the stack we've taken? There's a good chance it'll be in the sapwood. I don't think it will have got to the heartwood yet. Uh, although it was a dead standing tree for a number of years before it fell over. So possibly. So after a hard day's work, this here is probably the best fruit of our labour. You can see here now it's fairly square as it is. About 80 inches in length, very tight grain. We won't need a whole lot of work with the planers to get this looking like a modern square plank. Even though that's not exactly the end goal here, we are trying to make it look like it was done entirely with hand tools. You can see this portion of the wood is sap wood, which is useless. You want the hard heart wood, which is this kind of darker wood here. So this oak log is now split into pieces. It's mean, it means that we've been able to load it in the van, which is a good bonus, uh, by hand without any lifting gear. Uh, that's one of the reasons to make it smaller, but also then the next thing is to what we're gonna make it into. So Owen has an idea of a project he wants to make. I'm sure he'll tell you all about it. For me, I'd like to make uh, a warp weighted loom for weaving. It's a historical style loom and I hope to be taking some pictures and filming the process. You'll be able to follow it along on living.longbows on Instagram and on Facebook as well.